what we're looking at here is a Maytag washer, a clothes washer lid switch that has been opened. And we can take a look inside and see how it works, except I'm not going to explain that to you because on YouTube, there is someone with a channel called Just Enjoying Life, which I will link in this description. And he does an outstanding job of explaining how this works. However, I want to clarify something that he's saying that, and some other commenters on there just to make it absolutely clear uh, what's happening. So he goes through and explains, and I'm not going to, um, how all of this works with this switch. It's a super job, very academic, and I, I like it. Um, as a professor in electronics and engineering technology, um, I, I love to hear very clean and clear descriptions, repeating key points. It was well done. But what I want to point out here is that at the top, we have a neutral and then a hot. Um, in AC, we need both of these wires. Both of these wires go to a load. You could think of these as a positive and a ground if you're dealing with DC. Um, so, so the hot and the neutral have to go to some load. Think of a motor, a light, a pump, you know, both of these have to go. Um, we also have this motor lead that's in yellow. There's two wires that come out for that. And then the machine, as they call it in blue, is probably going to, uh, allow the pump to turn on to fill the, your washer with water. But what I want to show you is mine. And, and my switch has the same problem as his and so many others, is this link is broken. Now, this link was described as, he called it a fusible link. Now, I don't know if he, he, I, he certainly was using that as a very good way to describe that, you know, a fusible link blows when there's too much current. Now, his switch looked very, very clean. My switch here is, is 21, maybe 22 years old. So it's a little dirty on the inside. And when I say dirty, I mean it's enclosed. Uh, they do a good job. They put three rivets inside of here to hold down the, the, the lid. Here's the other side of the lid. I used a Dremel tool to grind those off so I could open this up and have a look. It's not really easy to open and service. They could have put screws, but they did not. They put rivets. I don't think, and I'm speaking about this from an engineering perspective, I want to talk about planned obsolescence because what this is, is a device that is planned to fail. If you look inside, now again, mine lasted a very long time, and I want to point out something. Whenever I opened my lid, um, I saw this. Now, this is going to freak some people out. Actually, the orientation would be like this. So if you look at the darkest spot right here, this is where the highest current is going to um, to affect this. So, so basically whenever this is closed like that, that switch is closed, uh, the lid is shut. Uh, it allows current to go to the motor. That's going to be the highest drag on the device, the, the most current. So the biggest load. And as this oxidizes, um, we're going to create little burnt patterns. They're not even going to be visible to the naked eye at first. But those create added resistance, so every single time it's closed, any kind of junk that's in this little environment in here um, will want to collect and burn because of probably little arcing that's occurring every time that closes. And so after thousands of open and closes and open and closes and clicks like this over and over again, um, especially while... Certainly not while it's running, but while it's running, and my wife is one to add stuff constantly as the uh, the thing is filling up, and maybe even as it's running, um, that's going to add pitting to the contacts, which once they pit, then they there's a little more resistance, and the more resistance that we have, uh, the greater the heat. This is Ohm's law and the power equation. They all spell out that there's going to be, if there's greater resistance in between contact points, we're going to lose some of our voltage available to us in the form of heat. So this switch probably got hot. I mean, that's why it's brown. It, it, was, it was good that it failed. But it didn't fail here. Um, it failed here. And this fusible link biz, business, what it is, is actually, it's, it's a plastic composite type material and I ran a continuity test. There's no continuity between these 
these plastic, these two blades, so this plastic right here has no continuity, it's not a conductor, and that's where it would be stuck together. These two pieces should be together. They're not, um, but if this was a brand new one, they would be stuck together with a piece of material right here that, that would be continuous. There's no continuity between these two. It's a bit of, of a farce, really. The neutral has no bearing to anything that goes on in this entire apparatus. There's nothing that I can tell that's happening. What you see right in here is an insulator between blades. This is the same material used in a relay. And a relay insulates all of its lines until the contact point. So it's really built a lot like a relay, except instead of a magnetic field operating it, it's actually mechanical. When the lid shuts, there's a mechanical move. That's not a relay moving it. It's not a magnetic field that's moving it. It's a mechanical movement done by the lid. But I'm not sure, and I would love an engineer uh, or, or anybody, probably a Maytag technical appliance person is not the right person to answer this question. Um, those folks are trained that they have to replace these parts, that they're very important. They may not know completely uh, how an engineering tech might be told to engineer this switch in order for it to fail. But... The switch is certainly not engineered in order for anyone to open it up, especially somebody that's a trained and authorized repair person. They're told that this is a field replaceable unit. Computer technicians are told that power supplies are field replaceable units too, and that they shouldn't open them up and work on them. But the main reason why they don't open these things up and work on them, and the reason why they're told that, is because that there's no profit in working on one of these devices. They may be able to fix this fusible link really quick, as we've been calling it. It's not fusible link, but this little link here, they might be able to replace that link, but the time that it would take to undo the three screws and go in and replace that link and still have burnt contacts, that's, that's just yet another training item and a bunch of little pieces that could fall out. The spring could come flying out. It could be a real mess. They tend to want to work with modules. This is a con considered a module by itself. And therefore, it's just made to unplug. So you unplug the module and you replace it. And you keep one of these in your toolbox where it bounces around with much bigger industrial sized things. And that's how the industry works. But my point again is about obsolescence. It's kind of like the light bulb whenever they forced it to only burn for 2,000 hours, um, the old incandescence. We have the same kind of thing happening here, planned obsolescence, engineered obsolescence. The fix for this is replace this whole thing if you really care about that lid. And for safety reasons, I'm sure that, that matters. But here's the proof. My washer is upstairs and running right now. I cut the black wire, the yellow wire, the blue wire. I stripped them all back. Of course, I did this with the power off. I put a big wire nut on there, the proper size wire nut for one, two, three, four, because I think there's four wires total number 14s, so that's what they are. Uh, you could use a, a red wire nut. You can use a yellow wire nut, the standard ones. Um, yellow is probably better because it'll fit tighter. Screw it on nice and tight. Um, if you're concerned at all, wrap it with, with electrical tape. And the neutral has no bearing. You disconnect, you disconnect the connector. Again, mine's running. My washer's running right now. This is not connected. I have these three wires, or the, there's four actually, but the black, both yellows and blue, are all tied together, and the neutrals are just set there in a connector that's disconnected to everything. So very interesting is the way the neutral is even wired into this, because it has no bearing on the circuit whatsoever. So if you have any comments about that, I'd love to hear about it. But I want to hear about it from someone who's thought about this from an engineering perspective, uh, from a design perspective, um, to see what you have to say about it, especially um, those anybody that worked for, for Maytag that, or, or has engineered any kind of switches like this. Why do we do things like this? Why? Why? That doesn't make any sense. It seems like a way overcomplicated mechanical switch setup to do what its intention is, which is to, to allow electricity to the machine but to break electricity to the boater whenever the lid is up. Seems to me like you don't even need the blue lines there ever. You only need a hot line going, just a single hot, going to the uh, to the motor, the yellow wire, 
and then break that connection when the lid is up. That's it. So it seems like it's over-engineered. seems like it's got engineered um, obsolescence involved. And of course, the dead giveaway is whenever you rivet these things together instead of put screws, there's a piece of a rivet sticking out um, where nobody can open them up without, you know, kind of destroying them. All right, that's it. I'm off my soapbox. Thank you for watching.